Ooh. <laughs> Hi everybody, it's me, Peaches Christ, and I am coming to you from the deep depth, the bowels of the terror vault. Oh my God. Working in a haunted attraction, I have to tell you, there are some job hazards you just can't avoid. And so you might be able to tell that this morning I've suffered a little bit of a, um, well, a, a glamorous um, emergency to the head. Uh, and, you know, who cares? Because all I did was took my little injury here and I, well, I uh, threw some glitter on it. How does it look? Do you like it? Oh, thank you. Someone said I look amazing. Hola, Nimi. Hola. Como esta? Nimi is my friend who um, moved into um, our apartment. She stole our apartment in Mexico. When we were briefly living down in Mexico, Nimi came in and stole our apartment from us. And now she lives there and posts lots of pictures. Um, irritating me daily. Uh, so anyway, I'm coming to you from the Terror Vault. Now, I don't know if you're aware, but I uh, co-create a haunted attraction here in San Francisco, California, where uh, we did not recall our governor, thank goddess. Um, we have been working so hard on this brand new show, The Immortal Reckoning is what it's called. My uh, creative partner and I, David Flower, and a whole team of artists and actors, painters, set builders, audio designers, filmmakers. Uh, we have over 80 plus employees this year working on this thing. It's called The Immortal Reckoning. That's the name of the show. And then we've also created um, an entire bar experience, like a nightlife experience called Fang Bang. And uh, well, if you're like me, you miss 80s golf music. And uh, so I created a whole nightclub here at The Mint with vampire performers, vampire actors who are going to be doing all sorts of things to the guests, especially if they're wearing the red opt-in necklace. Uh, you may get bit, you may get locked in a coffin, you may even get a vampire lap dance. That's right. Uh, while Susie Sue and The Cure and Bauhaus blast your asses off, there will be dancing, there will be blood. Um, and The Immortal Reckoning it is our, um, I don't know, I, I guess it's our piece de resistance, as they say in France. Um, it is the show that we've worked on harder and longer than any other show because of the pandemic. The pandemic gave us an extra year, an extra year to obsess, to build, to paint, to write, to create. So when I say this might be the best show I've ever presented, just know I'm not talking out my asshole. It's true. It's true. Um, so tickets are cheaper. I want you to know they are cheaper earlier in the run because it is tougher to get people to come uh, when it's further away from Halloween. But it's a perfect time to come because, you know, everyone's fresh. You know, the blood is fresh. Uh, all the body parts are fresh. And uh, it's, you know, it's just, well, we want you to come early. It's terrorvault.com. That's where you go, okay? Now, um, I see that people are engaging with me. I needed to get that, um, that plug, that butt plug out of the way because it's all I'm doing. The other plug that I must do uh, from the forest here, the graveyard forest at the Terror Vault where I just got axed. Um, I got axed. Hey, what, do you guys wanna ask me a question? <laughs> get it? Um, I was wanting to tell you about the Midnight Mass podcast, which I've been having so much fun doing. Uh, my co-host, Michael Varadi, and I have been hard at work, and we've done um, a bunch of episodes now. We've been out for, you know, a while. Um, and the episode that came out at midnight, um, this, well, last night, midnight, because, you know, it comes out at midnight. Of course, it's Midnight Mass. Um, that episode is all about... Uh, one of my favorite idols, the legendary filmmaker, William Castle. And William Castle is probably the biggest inspiration as far as Terror Vault goes, because I feel like William Castle's movies are kind of like a haunted attraction, you know? It's more than just a movie, you know? He had these fantastic gimmicks 
you know, percepto, uh, where, where in, in the Tingler, he, uh, well, people think that he electrocuted the audience, but actually what it was is he stuck vibrators. <laughs> Not that kind of vibrator, but like an industrial vibrator, like a metal intense vibration he, he attached to the seats in the theater. So in the cinema, when the Tingler creature would climb down off the screen and into the auditorium, Vincent Price himself would address the audience and tell them that the Tingler has escaped and the Tingler is in the audience. And just then, guess what happened? They were vibrated. They thought they were being electrically shocked. They thought the tingler was grabbing their feet. No, 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 no. It was all an illusion. Uh, but Vincent Price correctly said that only screaming would make the tingler go away. So uh, you had to scream as loud as you possibly could, which I love. And so we are hoping you will come to the Terror Vault and scream your asses off this uh, Halloween season. Um, we have some notable performers that you may see in the show if you attend. Um, they include Cream, uh, scare, one of the scariest bitches around. Polly Amber Ross is in the show. Uh, Rhea Light, who is vile. She's vile and disgusting. You know, just even looking at her could give you an STD. I mean, it, this, is a, this is a very intense interactive experience. Um, who else is in the show? We've got Enterobang, we've got Dragon, we've got, uh, well, we've got a lot of, actually this year, I'm gonna tell you right now, we've got a lot of sexy men and women, but we've got a lot of sexy men because we have a whole Tom of Finland uh, vampire character uh, as well as a naked sacrifice. And so we've got some porn stars. Um, you may know Blue Bailey from the movies. Uh, and, uh, well, my trainer, he's not a porn star, but he's my trainer, Pablo Escobar Schmidt. Um, uh, they're all in the show, and um, depending on what night you come, you're going to see one of them, at least one of those guys, fully nude. And then they get murdered. Ah! It's, like, so exciting to me. Um, but don't worry, don't worry, lesbians. Don't worry, lesbians. We've got boobs too. We've got bare breasts. Um, we're an equal opportunity um, murderer around here. Um, and we love uh, wicked women. We love women who kill. We love um, women who, um, you know, destroy um, men. Uh, so that's a big part of the show. And of course, because it's, you know, our show, um, well, we've got, you know, uh, gender in a blender going on. So we've got a lot of queer, uh, representation and, and queer storylines um, with our um, super twisted uh, haunted attraction. Now, everyone is gonna, you know, come and, and enjoy this thing. It's just so much fun. Now, um, I wanna know if you have any questions for me um, while I'm here live, live on social media. Um, by the way, are you imp as impressed as I am that I'm in full drag? at nine in the morning. <laughs> uh, I just did an interview um, for television, for the news. It was pre-recorded, so it will, it will air at a later date. But I, do, I, do, I must say that I was impressed by the reaction I got working this look from the newscaster. I think it was a bit surprising um, when, they, when I came up on their screen, on their Zoom screen. You know, we do these interviews now from on location because they don't want me in the studio, you know. Uh, so yeah, okay, someone asked Andy Mundy, what is your favorite scary movie? Now I'm guessing that Andy is not from North America, probably from the UK, if I were to guess, because of the way they, the, the, the sort of distorted, um, bastardized English way um, they spelled favorite. So um, let me answer that question. Uh, my favorite all-time scary movie is, <gasps> look, can you guess? Look, look, look. It's a nightmare on Elm Street. Uh, I was so young when it came out and the mix of fantasy and horror in the first A Nightmare on Elm Street and the whole, the whole legend of Freddy Krueger um, just captured my imagination. I loved that Freddy, Freddy's kills could be over the top because they existed in a dreamscape. I loved that he was um, avenging his own death 
um, by, by haunting the children of the, the, the parents that killed him. I just loved it all. And I loved his burn scar makeup. I loved his claws. I also have said many times over the years that Freddy himself is kind of like a drag persona, you know. Um, and so I just think that that is um, my all-time favorite. But it's very hard for me to choose because, I mean, right behind, you know, the original Nightmare on Elm Street is, of course, Psycho is the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, is the Silence of the Lambs, um, what else? Uh, oh my gosh, just so many. Um, the Reanimator, I mean, I just love it, okay? Okay, so now, um, the next question from Andy. Andy, where are you from? You, you spell favorite in such a strange and exotic way. Are you from England? Um, Andy wants to know what my favorite line from a John Waters film is. Well, it's from Taffy Davenport, uh, played by the genius Mink Stoll, who was just featured on the Midnight Mass podcast when we um, dedicated an episode to the fabulous film Desperate Living. Um, but my favorite line of dialogue um, does come from Mink, um, and I would say that it's a tie. Uh, because I can't decide um, between these two lines which I prefer more. So the one is, I wouldn't suck your lousy cock if I was suffocating and there was oxygen in your balls. And I can't deliver it the way Mink does. It, I, I, I'm a mere impersonation, a cheap impersonation of the flawless way Taffy says that to her stepfather who asks her to suck his cock. Um, the other line that I just love is when Mink is interviewing Sandy Sandstone in the movie Pink Flamingos, and she says, well, Miss Sandstone, Miss Sandy Sandstone, I'm afraid there's just two kinds of people in this world, my kind of people and assholes. I'm afraid it's rather obvious which category you fit into. <laughs> <laughs> it never gets old, does it? And I'll tell you, when Mink and I go on the road together and we do clips from her films, of course we do that clip. And I, there's nothing better than sitting on stage with Mink Stoll as a, as a clip from um, her movie career plays behind her and the entire audience is screaming her line along with her. You know, and I remember the first time we... Uh, experienced that super intensely, uh, I looked at her and I, I said, well, could you ever have imagined? You know, because of course when they filmed that movie, she couldn't have imagined that all these decades later, you know, audiences of people around the world would be screaming her dialogue at her. It was fabulous. Um, all right, any other questions? Um, well, uh, and Andy, um, oh, the Glasgow Film Festival. Yeah, I would love to come back to Glasgow someday. I just, you know, I had such a fun time there. Um, I'll never forget um, performing with some of the local queens when we did Barbarella, my um, Barbarella parody uh, starring Lady Bear as the bear lady savior of the universe. Um, there was a queen named Guillotina Munter. Um, no one quite like her. I mean, I... <laughs> I don't know. I don't really know. Um, I just love her so much because, I mean, she she was just wonderful. So I don't drink, and um, I'll never forget her telling me, um, you know, to, I can't do her accent, but she said, that I'll try. She said, you know, I don't drink either. And I said, oh, why don't you drink anymore? And she said, I found I got a bit stabby. And I was like, what? Like, you found what? And she was like, I found I got a bit stabby. I got a bit stabby. And I'm like, what does that mean? I don't even know what stabby means. And she was like, you know, uh, pick up a knife, I'll stab people. <laughs> I'm like, okay. So what you're telling me is you got a bit stabby. And what you literally mean is you would drink, then pick up a knife, and then stab people. That to me is maybe as Scotland as it gets, right? You know, I feel like... I, I had a very Scottish experience. I'm glad she didn't stab me, quite frankly, because I think, um, yeah, I think she, she would have, you know, if given the opportunity. And it, just even a, a sip of wine, and I think she just would have probably plunged a butcher knife um, deep inside of me. Um, yes, okay, so someone is saying, you and Lawrence Cheney would be hilarious. I would, I love Lawrence Cheney, would love to work with her. Could someone put in a good word with her? 
for me, um, I will say this, as far as the UK goes, um, well, Jinx Monsoon and I are negotiating, uh, bringing a big show over uh, in 2022. We actually had a whole show planned uh, for 2020, um, and it was such a bummer because it was one of the many things that got canceled. Um, but now, um, uh, Tim Whitehead, the fantastic producer who works uh, in conjunction with the Soho Theater, is putting together um, a, another project. And so we are working on that. So we hope to be back in the UK uh, in 2022. And actually, I have another gig coming up in the UK. I don't even think I'm allowed to announce it yet, but I'm gonna tea, I'll tell you what the concept is. They're bringing me over to London for a week of a special vacation that centers around a cult movie experience. And well, all I can say is if you're a fan of cult movies and you're interested in going to England, uh, this is going to be quite the trip. And I'm doing a couple of the uh, couple of the events. And one of them is with a dear friend of mine. And it's going to be at a very special castle. Okay. And all, all I'll say is don't dream it, be it. You know, and by that I mean nothing more then you gotta keep an eye and an ear out for this vacation, which is gonna be announced very soon. So um, 2022, I'm back in the UK. I love it. I'm an Anglophile. You know, I'm, 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 uh, I think it's, those are my roots, you know? Um, and so I just, I love going there. And um, you know, for all of you that are in the UK and you want to see a, a picture show or uh, at one of our cult movie events, um, especially because M Michael and I are going to be um, touring soon with a Midnight Mass road show. Um, let producers know. Let let people in the UK know. Like we need Peaches Christ here. We we desperately need her. Um, and and you know if they hear it enough, they'll they'll reach out to me and they'll put something together. The problem is I don't have um, I don't have a company in the UK, so I don't have my feet on the ground there. So I'm not able to to produce an event. Um, for myself, unfortunately. I need a producer to come along and work on that. Oh my God, I forgot to mention, Mink Stoll and I were also set to go to the UK in 2020, right at, right when the pandemic kicked in. Uh, and that was for the And What Festival. Um, it's a queer arts festival and we were all ready to go. I mean, I mean, we were leaving like in a week and that was another thing that was canceled. So please let Andrew, uh, LRB No, who's the director of the And What Queer Arts Festival, that you want pink, pink, no, well, maybe pink flamingos, but you want Mink, Stoll, and Peaches Christ to, to um, be rebooked um, and sent over to jolly old England. And you know, the other reason why is because Mink has never done a show in England. Come on, Brits. You need to see this living legend. It is Mink Stoll. Demand it. Demand they, 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 they allow me to bring you your mink. You deserve it. And Mink and I sing songs together and we show movie clips and we tell stories. And um, I just, I think that is going to be a very special, special event. All right. Well, I'm going to um, take off soon because, wow, I really do have a headache for some reason. I don't know why, but my head is throbbing, you all. Um, so let me know if you have any final questions. Um, d yes? No? Um, I'm not sure. Oh, Bobby Friday is saying hello. Hi, Bobby. Bobby Friday is a, um, a dear friend, a great uh, drag performer here in San Francisco. She does a lot of my wigs. She did not do this one. You know where this wig came from? Um, literally one of my drag children. And when I say literally, it's because this person started following Peaches Christ and asked his father, or I'm sorry, their father, to bring them to me when she was a young, young queen, okay? Um, she was eight years old when we met and her drag name was fabulously Rainbow Gourd Cake. Uh, and she has since um, just butted into a young adult. I just love her so much. Um, she's uh, Sailor Hank, uh, and she is working in New Orleans at a fantastic beauty salon where they do wigs and makeup. 
Um, another friend of mine works there too, Brooklyn. It's called Fifi Mahoney's. And um, Sailor Hank reached out to me and said that one of the wig designers had done this quaff and asked if I would be interested. And as soon as I saw a picture of it, I said, uh, yeah, absolutely, Sailor Hank. Uh, please have it shipped to me directly. So it was shipped out uh, with love from Fifi Mahoney's in New Orleans. And now I make, it's making its debut. It even came with these little, little leaves in it. What do you guys think? Do you like my new wig? It's good, right? Um, okay, any other questions? I see some comments, but no questions. That's fine. It's totally fine. Also, have y'all seen Candyman yet? You need to. It's amazing. Um, I uh, love you all. Uh, I do hope you'll visit terrorvault.com and get yourself some tickets. And uh, I look forward to seeing you over here at the Terror Vault very soon. Oh, yeah, and go, go listen to the new Midnight Mass, William Castle. Fantastic.